In June 2020, I decided to travel to Pisa in Italy immediately after the country had reopened its borders. In this video, I want to show you what travel in Italy is like now and share my top 7 things to do in Pisa during the new normal. Good morning! And I'm super excited today because we're going to Pisa to see one of the most famous monuments in the world. Obviously, I'm talking about the Leaning Tower of Pisa. We're here in Florence in the Central Station. We're gonna catch a train now. And here we are. This is the world-famous town of Pisa. Alright, I just bought a bus ticket and now let's head for the Piazza dei Miracoli, the Miracle Square where we can find the Leaning Tower and the other showstopper sites of Pisa. And there it is! You can already see it! Tower of Pisa is one of the most famous buildings in the world. Its construction was begun in 1173 by Bonanno Pisano, without the architect realizing that a mixture of sand and clay under the Piazza dei Miracoli was making the ground extremely unstable. The tower already started to lean during its construction and reached its maximum lean of 5.5 degrees in 1990, getting extremely close to collapse. Thanks to patient remedial work that took more than a decade, the tower was stabilized and is now open for visitors again. And the number one tourist pose here, of course, is holding up the Leaning Tower. So we're gonna make a quick stop at the tourist office to ask how we could get up on that beautiful tower. That's always a good idea because during the new normal, you never actually know if something's gonna be open or not. It's always best to look it up either online or even better, go to the tourist information. Usually there would be like probably a thousand people waiting here in line and because the new normal, there's absolutely no one. And we just walk straight into the ticket office. After buying my tickets, I walked over to the tower. To help everyone keep a safe distance, an employee handed out little devices that start to beep if you get too close to someone. So this is what the tower looks like from the inside. I was rewarded for the steep climb up. The views from the top of the tower were absolutely stunning. You can see the original purpose of the tower. Bells, it's a bell tower. Campanile, as they say in Italian. After climbing back down, I walked over to the second main site on the Piazza dei Miracoli. The construction of the Duomo di Pisa was begun in 1063 under the architect Buschetto, and its architecture shows signs of Byzantine and Moorish influence, which points to Pisa's international ties as a former sea power. Some of the most important artwork inside the cathedral is the mosaic of Christ in the apse, the pulpit by Pisano, and the golden ceiling. The cathedral also contains the tomb of Saint Derinieros, the patron saint of Pisa and of all travelers. I continued to the third major site of Pisa. The oldest parts of the Battistero, baptistry in English, date from 1152, but the building was remodeled and continued by Nicola and Giovanni Pisano more than a century later and only completed in the 14th century. One of the best things you can do here is to climb to the upper gallery to listen to the remarkable acoustics of the double dome that are frequently demonstrated by the custodians. After leaving the Battistero, I walked over to the next religious site on the Piazza dei Miracoli. We're now in the Campo Santo, which is a cloistered courtyard where wealthy people from Pisa were once buried. The Campo Santo is said to have been built around a shipload of sacred soil from Calvary brought back to Pisa from the Third Crusade. It was used as a cemetery for several centuries and also contains a collection of ancient Roman sarcophagi and sculptures. And there's some really beautiful frescoes on the wall. Unfortunately though, when the Allies conquered Italy, they destroyed a big part of it. One of them, though, is still here, and it's a really impressive one. The 
restored frescoes in the Campo Santo by Bufalmacco are impressive works of art and give a good impression of the medieval worldview. Some of the most striking frescoes here are The Last Judgment, Hell, and The Triumph of Death. So now we'll take the bus to the best gelateria, which means ice cream shop in the city. I'm really excited. Let's see if it's really as good as everyone says. By the way, if you want to use public transport in Italy, usually Google Maps works extremely well. So that's what I've been relying on and it seems to work. And here we are next to the Arno River in the center of Pisa and it's so beautiful. Look at this. It's stunning. And here we are. The Cotelli best ice cream in town looks really unassuming from the outside. Let's see what it offers on the inside. Look, we got it. This is Macadamia nut and some other delicious flavors. Wow, I've tried it and it is really special. So nice. So here, for example, this one has capers and pistachio. Really good. So yeah, I highly recommend this gelateria if you're in Pisa. So now let's walk over to one of the best museums that they have here in Pisa. It's called Palazzo Blu. As you can easily see when you look at the wall behind me, I'm at the Palazzo Blu, which is an art museum that has art from the 14th until the 20th century mostly. It also has an archaeological area in the basement. So it sounds like a cool combination. Let's go in and see what it's like. Okay, now this museum is really taking the safety measures to another level. I have, as you can see, gloves. And I got, of course, the mask. And then I also have to package everything inside the plastic bags. So this is my camera bag. And this is my regular bag, trying to get really good. Palazzo Blu houses an art collection of mostly Pisan works from the 14th to the 20th century and offers varying temporary exhibitions. When I was there, the museum featured an exhibition about the 60s in Pisa. My favorite part of the museum, however, were the aristocratic apartments on the first floor that are furnished exactly as they were in the 19th century. And we're walking through the rain. I hope you're a little bit luckier when you visit Pisa. But a little bit of rain in the evening now doesn't hurt too much. Crazy. And now I'm in front of a completely different work of art. This is called Tutto Mondo by Keith Haring. And it was the last big wall mural that the artist painted here on the facade of a Pisan church. Keith Haring had the philosophy of turning common, boring, maybe sometimes even depressing spaces into festive, colorful works of art. And I think he succeeded marvelously here with the facade of this church. I walked over to the Bar Il Gufo to meet up with a new friend. So now it's time for the aperitivo and I'm here in this bar called Il Gufo, which means the owl, right? Yeah! Oh, okay, we the owl. And I'm here with uh, Sabrina from Counter, and I just met her. And look at the drinks, they're so amazing. This is the Spritz Aperol. But the special thing is the decoration, it's so fancy. And also Sabrina's Prosecco. I have a yellow rose. It's amazing, it's so pretty. Wow. This is aperitivo. And of course, since we're in Italy, I got some nice pasta now and before I'll take my train back to Florence. It looks amazing. It has nduia, which is a spicy sausage, and of course, some Italian spices. It looks really, really good. So those are my recommendations for pizza. What are yours? If you're from there or if you've been there before, please make sure to leave your tips and advice in the comment box below this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Max Nomad for new travel videos published every day. I'm Lex Nomad and I will talk to you again soon.